Transport of chemicals across the plasma membrane is required for normal cell functions. Some chemicals, like oxygen, are imported to maintain metabolic processes in the cell. Others, like carbon dioxide, are exported as the cell produces them. Communication occurs between cells when substances produced by one cell, such as neurotransmitters, induce the transport of chemicals across the plasma membrane of another cell, making the generation of an action potential possible. Passive transport processes are driven by concentration gradients. They include Diffusion through the bilayer, diffusion through membrane pores or gated channels, facilitated diffusion using transporter membrane proteins, and osmosis. Active transport processes use energy from ATP to move molecules. They include transport of chemicals across the membrane using protein pumps, and transport of large volumes of fluid large particles, or cells, via transport vesicles. Gases and nonpolar molecules pass through the bilayer along their concentration gradients in the process of diffusion. Ions and glucose cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Charged molecules like ions diffuse through the plasma membrane via membrane proteins. Leakage pores are always open. The number of pores or channels determines the amount of ions that diffuse across the membrane. Gated channels are opened when they bond to chemicals or experience changes in voltage. Molecules like glucose bind with transporter proteins that change shape to facilitate the transport of the molecule. One of the roles of the hormone insulin is to promote production of transporter proteins. Water passes in and out of a cell, primarily through pores called aquaporin. During osmosis, water, like ions, will move down its concentration gradient. The concentration gradient of water is, to a large degree, determined by the fluid's solute concentration. The direction of osmosis depends on the relative concentrations of solutes in the cytosol and extracellular fluid. If the ion concentration is the same in both solutions, then water moves in equal amounts in both directions. A hypertonic solution 
has a low concentration of water, so the direction of osmosis would be toward this solution. A hypotonic solution has a high concentration of water, so the direction of osmosis would be away from this solution. Primary active transport of charged or polar solutes requires membrane protein pumps that use energy supplied by the hydrolysis of ATP. This causes a conformational change, moving the molecule up its concentration gradient. The sodium-potassium pump is an example of a pump used to maintain electrochemical gradients in neurons. Actively transporting ions is the major way the cell has of maintaining water balance. Secondary active transport occurs when the concentration gradient of sodium or hydrogen ions produced by primary active transport drives the transport of another chemical. Low cytosolic calcium levels are maintained by secondary active transport. Another example of secondary transport is the absorption of nutrients from the digestive tract into intestinal cells. Endocytosis is the movement of large particles or macromolecules into the cell. During endocytosis, a small round sac called a vesicle is formed from an existing membrane and used for transport. Three types of endocytosis are phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Phagocytosis is a common form of endocytosis and part of a vital defense system protecting the body from disease. Large particles, like bacteria, bind to a receptor, causing the membrane to extend to form pseudopods, which then surround the bacteria, forming a vesicle called a phagosome. The phagosome will fuse with a lysosome, and the enzymes in the lysosome will digest the bacteria. Pinocytosis is the process in which a cell drinks a tiny droplet of extracellular fluid, including solutes. The plasma membrane folds inward to form the vesicle, which then pinches off and moves into the cytosol. Like phagocytosis, vesicles fuse with lysosomes, and the solutes are digested.
receptor-mediated endocytosis imports needed materials like certain hormones, antibodies, vitamins, and low-density lipoproteins into a cell. Specific receptor proteins bind with these substances. And then interact with peripheral proteins, called clathrin, found on the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. This area of a membrane is called a clathrin coated pit. When the coated pit and receptor interact, the membrane folds inward to form a vesicle surrounding the substance and receptors. Once inside the cytosol, the vesicle loses its clathrin, which is recycled back to the membrane. The uncoated vesicle now fuses with a vesicle called an endosome, where the substance and the receptor are separated and sorted. Many of the receptors leave the endosome via a carrier vesicle and are returned to the plasma membrane. The ingested substance and some receptors are transported in carrier vesicles to a late endosome which binds with a lysosome, where the substances are digested into usable products by the cell. Transcytosis is a process common in endothelial cells of blood vessels. In this process, the carrier vesicle transports substances from the blood across the cell, where it releases into the extracellular fluid of the interstitial fluid. Exocytosis is another method of vesicular transport that moves large volumes of fluid or chemicals out of the cell. Vesicles, enclosing substances for release, seal to plasma membranes, and the contents are exported out of the cell. Exocytosis is the way cells eject waste products resulting from endocytosis. Nervous cells release neurotransmitters via exocytosis, and secretory cells secrete important substances like digestive enzymes and hormones.